Hello, online arts community. Welcome to Fleetwood Jordan Theater Stay Creative in collaboration with Piven Theater Workshop, a journey through the history of Black theater, a series with me, Professor Bria Walker. Today's lesson is part two of the August Wilson series. In this segment, we'll explore Wilson's 10 play century cycle. As we learned in the last episode, the year is 1978 and August Wilson has left Pittsburgh and moved to St. Paul, Minnesota to join his friend, Claude Purdy, at the Penumbra Theater Company. It was at Penumbra that, according to Wilson, he wrote his first real play, Jitney. Jitney is set in the 1970s and takes place in the Hill District in a Jitney station during Pittsburgh's period of urban renewal. As the city tries to shut down businesses, including the Jitney station, to make way for new buildings, we meet five Jitney drivers struggling to survive. Jitney had a long road to Broadway. His first performance was in 1982 at Pittsburgh's small Allegheny Repertory Theater. After Wilson's career took off with Ma Rainey in 1983, Jitney sat untouched until Pittsburgh Public Theater's then artistic director, Eddie Gilbert, asked to produce it in 1996. Then from 1996 to 2000, the play made its rounds and rewrites in regional theater productions. It wasn't until 2017 that the play would make its Broadway debut. Wilson has stated that when he started writing Jitney, he didn't have the cycle in mind. The plays came to him out of order. According to Pittsburgh theater critic and friend Chris Rawson, quote, August said it was only when he got to St. Paul that he was able to look back on Pittsburgh and sort of see more clearly and feel more clearly the life he lived there. All those guys he had been listening to in the diners and the jitney stations and the cafes and the street corners, all that material came freshly out of him." End quote. While in Minneapolis, he submitted his play Jitney and was awarded a fellowship to the Minnesota Playwright Center. This led to his acceptance to the National Playwrights Conference at the O'Neill Center in 1982. It was at the O'Neill Center that Wilson would forge a relationship with then artistic director Lloyd Richards. Richards was dean of the Yale University School of Drama and the artistic director of the Yale Repertory Theater. At the conference, Wilson began working on Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is the only play in the century cycle not set in Pittsburgh. Ma Rainey is set in the 1920s in a recording studio in Chicago. The action revolves around the ideas of racism and Black exploitation in the music industry. Ma Rainey becomes a success and two years later, in 1984, opens on Broadway. According to Wilson, quote, I think the blues is the best literature that we as Blacks have created since we've been here. There are lots of philosophical ideas in there. I call it our sacred book. What I've attempted to do is mine that field, to mine those cultural ideas and attitudes and give them to my characters." End quote. The blues was a huge influence on Wilson's work. The blues is one of the four Bs that Wilson said influenced the creation of his plays. The other three are artist Romare Bearden, Argentinian writer Jorge Borges, and dramatist, novelist, and poet Amiri Baraka. Audiences loved Ma Rainey, but some argue that there was no central figure in it and that maybe he was incapable of writing one. Wilson was determined to prove them wrong, and one year later, Fences was published. Fences is set in the 1950s and centers around Troy Maxson, a strong man who has had to work hard to survive. Troy used to be a talented baseball player in the Negro Leagues, but because of racism, could not break into the major leagues. Fences deals with the difficult themes of racism, family, and lost dreams. In 1987, Fences wins the Pulitzer Prize for Drama. In 2016, it was made into a major motion picture starring Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. Wilson, feeling as though he had proven himself, now felt free to write whatever he wanted. Next came Joe Turner's Come and Gone inspired by a Romare Bearden painting called Mill Hand's Lunch Bucket. When you look at the painting, you will see a man dressed all in black. This image caught Wilson's attention. This man would become the main character in the play. The title was inspired by the W.C. Handy blues song, Joe Turner Blues. The song was based on the historical figure of Joe Turney. 
Joe Turner's Come and Gone, set in 1917, is the story of Harold Loomis who, with his young daughter Zonia, arrive at a Pittsburgh boarding house in search of his wife, Martha. He is haunted by the memory of bounty hunter Joe Turner, the man who illegally enslaved him. Loomis is unable to fully embrace or release the past. It is with the help of conjure man Bynum that he is able to end his search and release himself from his troubled past. The piano lesson came next. It premiered at Yale Rep in 1989 and opened on Broadway the same year. The piano lesson takes place in Pittsburgh in 1936 and wrestles with the problem of what African Americans can best do with their cultural heritage. How best should we put our history to use? August Wilson has been quoted as saying, my generation of blacks knew very little about the past of our parents. They shielded us from the indignities they suffered. In 1990, this beautifully written play wins the Pulitzer Prize for drama. In 1990, Wilson moves to Seattle, Washington. Why Seattle, you might ask? According to historylink.org, quote, Wilson moved to Seattle following the breakup of his second marriage in the summer of 1990. He was looking for a relaxed, civilized place to settle, end quote. In Seattle, he begins working on his next piece, Two Trains Running. In Two Trains Running, against the backdrop of the 1960s, we're back in the Hill District on Wiley Avenue in a restaurant. Memphis is the owner. The city, because of urban redevelopment, is seeking to purchase Memphis's restaurant from him. He's nervous about the asking price, but because of the eminent domain clause in his deed, he confidently states this, quote, they don't know I got a clause of my own. They can carry me out feet first, but my claws say they got to meet my price, end quote. Two Trains Running opens on Broadway in 1992. Seven Guitars centers around seven characters in the Hill District in 1948. The play begins and ends after the funeral of Floyd Schoolboy Barton. The play exhibits recurring themes of the Black man's fight for humanity, self-understanding, and self-acceptance. It opened on Broadway in 1996. Often thought of as the most tragic of Wilson plays, King Hedley II is the ninth play in Wilson's century cycle. The play follows King, an ex-con who is desperately trying to make $10,000 to open a video store by stealing stolen refrigerators. The play features characters from Seven Guitars, Ruby and Canewell, known in the play as Stool Pigeon, and mentions other characters from the rest of the cycle. The play takes place in the 1980s a time of excessive violence amongst and against African-Americans. Touching on many of the same themes that Wilson brings up in his other plays, King Hedley II explores what happens when black men feel worthless and black women feel forgotten. King Hedley II makes his Broadway debut in 2001. Gem of the Ocean is set in 1904 in Pittsburgh at 1839 Wiley Avenue in the Hill District. It is the home of Aunt Esther, a 285 year old former slave who is the keeper of tradition and history for her people and a renowned cleanser of souls. Many guests pass through Aunt Esther's home, including Citizen Barlow, a new arrival from down South who needs Aunt Esther to help him absolve the guilt and shame from a crime he's committed. Gem of the Ocean is a beautiful piece that reminds us of our African past, but at the same time, connects us with our African-American present. Gem premiered on Broadway in 2004. We now come to the final play of the cycle, Radio Gulf. Radio Gulf is the last play Wilson completed before his death in 2005. In Radio Gulf, the home of Aunt Esther is threatened with demolition that will make way for real estate development in the depressed area of the Hill District. Investors interested in this demolition include local politician Harmon Wilkes, who wants to increase his chance of becoming the city's first black mayor. History and legacy challenge Harmon's personal aspirations and his ideas of success. During the writing process of Radio Gulf, Wilson was diagnosed with liver cancer 
and was given three months to live. Determined to complete the cycle, Wilson enlisted the help of his longtime assistant and friend, Todd Kreidler. They were able to complete the play before his passing. Wilson has stated that, quote, before I am anything, a man or a playwright, I am an African American. The tributary streams of culture, history, and experience have provided me with the materials out of which I make my art, end quote. I have an affinity for August Wilson's work. Growing up outside of Pittsburgh and having personal family connections to him and to some of the people he worked with gives me pride in being an artist and being an artist with roots in Pittsburgh. The American theater owes a great deal to you, Mr. Wilson. You were a true master who accomplished something no one else has since. And for that, we salute you. Thank you. Join us next time as we turn another page in the history of Black theater.